Welcome to Direction Northeast. Hello, I'm Abby Hathorne. This program is a presentation of the Communications Department of Northeast State Community College. As a part of the golden anniversary of Northeast State, we have produced a series of programs examining three distinct eras of the school's operations. In this episode of Direction Northeast, we'll look back over the transition years when the school became a community college. We'll be back to start our program in just a moment. My name is Anthony Adams and I'm IT Support Specialist at Northeast State Community College, which is also where I got my start. If I could offer any advice to anyone out there that's looking to pursue their education, my advice to you is just do it. Once you talk to someone here, you will see how easy it is to communicate with the employees here and they're very willing and helpful to get you on your way to pursue your career. Our guests for this program are two pivotal figures in the transition from a technical stool to a community college. President Emeritus Dr. William Locke and Assistant Vice President of Evening Distance Learning Dr. Chris Leffer. Welcome guys, thanks to Direction Northeast. Thank, Thank you. you. Now to get started, Dr. Locke, our Northeast State slogan is, we're here to get you there. What does that mean to you? Well, it means that the college's main purpose is here to help people better improve their lives and so that they'll have a brighter future. Or if you really look, take a look at it, it goes back to we're here to try to prepare people for, to assume jobs on the job local market or continue their education at a higher educational institution with higher learning. Absolutely. Now, Chris, in, 1990, in 1966, when the school was first um, founded, we only had 35 students. We were just a vocational school. Now it's 2016 and we have over 7,500 students annually. What do you think caused such a large growth over 50 years? Well, I think, I think there's a number of factors. One, I think that the school always had a reputation of being a quality school. But I also think that as the institution grew and, and, and as it changed, particularly as we moved from a technical institute to a technical community college to a comprehensive community college, that changed the entire focus and the way in which the community at, looked at the, at the school in terms of what we could offer a student to do the same thing, get them where they needed to be. Now how does that really make you feel as far as being a, a faculty member of Northeast State and being here for a large transition period, how do you feel about that, that growth over such a... Well I thought it was just tremendous. Uh, from when we actually began the process of, of changing, and I was here when we had 1,700 students and it came in 1984 and to watch that transition over those those years of growth between 1986 to 1996 and then from 1996 on with the expansion of our off-campus teaching sites the initiation of distance learning increases in the the program offerings we had and then just our reputation in the community really made me feel wonderful about what i saw the metamorphosis of our institution and the change that occurred during that period of time. Oh, absolutely. Now, Dr. Locke, you were here for also a large portion of this transition and growth. Um, how do you feel about how Northeast State has expanded so much over the years? Well, I feel wonderful about it because, as Chris referenced, the school started in 66 as a vocational technical school, and then we made progression up till finally in the early 90s we became a community college. And our old mission changed. Everything changed about it because we were primarily focused on preparing guys to enter the industrial workforce. And when you added a university parallel component to it, then you had the opportunity to really just tremendously expand your enrollment. And that's exactly what happened. We increased our programs. We strengthened our academic, each of our academic programs we already had. We added new programs, trying to meet the needs of the community. And everything just fell in place for us. We had tremendous growth and I feel wonderful about that. That's great. And in 1996, uh, you started your presidency at Northeast State. Yes. And what made you want to become a part of the Northeast State family? Well, I really didn't. Well, <laughs> I had a wonderful job at the local community college in Morristown, but I had several friends <clears throat> up here who I uh, had grown up with, <clears throat> excuse me, who wanted me to come and then started looking around about, well, what am I going to do the last years of my career? And this was a wonderful opportunity. My family was, lived here, my mother, my brother. And uh, so I, everything just looked good. And I said, I'll give it a shot and see what happens. And luckily enough, I got the position. Now, Dr. Leffler, 
do you believe that community college, or Northeast State more specifically, is a great gateway program for students to have a better university uh, career? Oh, absolutely. I think that the two years at Northeast State, that gives particularly your first generation college student an opportunity to come in, get a taste of what college is really like, have low enrollment in, in the classrooms, have an opportunity to get to know their instructors and prepare themselves for the more rigorous things that's going to occur when you get into your junior and senior years in college. And I think that preparation just enables those students to make that transition so easy from a community college to a four-year institution. And I think that's the primary role of community college, not only to do exactly what Dr. Locke said, provide qualified workers for the workforce, but also to prepare those students who want to move from into a university parallel track to be prepared for those those last two years and then into graduate school if that follows after that. So I think the role of the community college is actually to do that, to ease that that transition. And I think we do an excellent job in Northeast State of doing that. Oh, I would agree. And especially with the Tennessee Promise and all of that starting to come into play, how do you feel that will affect uh, Northeast State and enrollment over the years? Oh, well, I think it's not doing nothing except increase our enrollment over the years. As, as Tennessee Promise becomes a part of the normal routine that high school students see, and, and I go back, if I could just talk back just a minute or two, we introduced dual enrollment classes into the high school. Dr. Locke, I remember going in and, and meeting with him about taking dual enrollment to the high schools where students can get both high school and college credit while they're still in high school that started that that role to move toward Tennessee Promise and it put into the minds of those students when they were juniors and seniors I can go ahead and get college credit and also get a jump start on college and by doing that that movement to Northeast State just made that easy transition right straight on into their four-year program if that's what they wanted to do or into a career technical program if if that was their desire. Now Dr. Locke and from 1995 to 2000 Northeast State saw an 18 percent increase in their enrollment what do you think caused such a large growth, making them one of the top community colleges or universities in the state? Well, there are lots of things, but primarily I think is that we began a, a series of messages to the community, meetings with different leaders in, in each of the communities about what this college really is and what it offers and what you can get here. I think prob the problem primarily was that most people, and this is not an issue, but they identified Northeast State as a technical Institute where you learn low-level skills for entering industry. And when we started talking to these people, we said, you know, you can come here and get all those wonderful skills that you need at a higher level to get a good job in the industry. But what you can also do if you want to, is you can come here and learn to, to have your first two years of your collegiate experience out of the way. You can become a doctor, a psychologist, a lawyer, an engineer, uh, or any other professional fields, nursing, uh, if you come here, you can get that same first two years here that you'll get somewhere else. And you can get it for a lot less money. And you can stay at home. You can have, have smaller classes. You can get to know the people better. You have all kinds of different programs to help you succeed if you have any difficulty. So all those things, plus others, uh, have contributed to that. Oh, I totally agree. Plus, we're here to get you there. <laughs> That's right. Now, in your time at Northeast State as a president, you we're here for not only the 30th anniversary, but now you're looking back on the 50th anniversary. How do you feel about everything of how it's progressed and changed in just that 20 years since you left? Well, I couldn't be more pleased because I think the institution has been fortunate in having some good leaders, both at the top and down within the ranks of the college, and that's been a major reason for the success. But uh, I just think it's wonderful. And uh, I think the college is, uh, moved into a position where, and we tried to make this as one of our goals earlier on, that we want this college to become a centerpiece in the region for job training. And I think we've moved to that place, don't you, Chris? I do, where, absolutely. Where we're recognized as the institution to go to if you're looking to enter the job market or get a good start on your education. So I couldn't be more pleased with that. Now, Chris, from 1996, the school experienced a lot of changes internally and externally. What can you tell me a little bit about that? Well. I want to go back and give this credit to Dr. Locke. I, I remember one of our first meetings that we had with Dr. Locke and the executive committee, and he, he made a statement. He said, we're going to change the culture at this institution, both internally and externally. One, in the way in which we look at ourselves as a college, 
and two, how the community perceives us as a college. And I think those two messages went out. One, when you walked on the campus, it was a beautiful campus to walk onto. That was one of the first initiatives that Dr. Locke did. But then, like he said, the message out to the community, we offer more and you can get what you need to get by coming to Northeast State. When I came in 1984, I came for a maximum of two years. I was going to stay here two years. I retired after 30 years here, 31 years, almost 31 years. It became my home. I, I watched it and, and it became a part of my life and I loved Northeast State in the time we were here. And I think that, that message that went out, that was sent out to the community, that you can get and do exactly what Dr. Locke said, you can, need, you can do this, you can be a skilled tradesman or you can advance on to get a law degree. And I, you can do it all here and you can begin right here at Northeast State. And I think that was the message that went out to everyone. I remember one time a, um, a mother called me and she said, uh, I just wanted to ask my daughter's thinking about coming down to Northeast State to take a, a math class. Do you really, do you offer real math? And I said, yes ma'am, we offer real math. And, and, that, and that, that was the change of perception that Dr. Locke referred to a moment ago is how we changed how the image of Northeast State looked in the community. I think people, we tried to put this message across, I think people bought into it that look, we're not just some rinky-dink second-class institution here. We put ourselves, our academic programs, first two years up against any four-year college or university in the region. And we think we'll be better because we can do so many more things than they can at the universities, the four-year colleges. And, uh, I think that if you take a look at the data we collected over the years about our academic program, how our students score on national examinations compared to other schools, where we always mostly ended up in the top half, we were very proud of that and very pleased, and people bought into that. Now, Dr. Locke, why do you think people have such this wild or terrible idea about what community college is? Is it because they started out as mostly technical, or why do you think that people I think if you go to community college, you must not be very smart or you can't get in anywhere else. Well, again, a different reason for that. Some folks think more pretty highly of themselves and <laughs> think maybe they're a little better than some other folks. But uh, I'm not sure. I, I just, I don't, I really don't know. That, uh, rephrase that question for me. Why do you think people have such this um, bad idea about what community college is? Everybody thinks they don't offer a lot of classes, or if you go to a community college, you're just going to be an average blue-collar worker. I think the re main reason is that people were used to colleges and universities, but they were not used to community colleges. Because the community college movement just started in the late uh, 60s in Tennessee. So if you've never had any experience except going to a university or going away to four-year school, Coming to a local community college is, is quite a change, and I think that's probably more than anything else the reason that, that they had those early skeptical doubts about it. Yeah. Now, Chris, what is what did, would you say is one of the biggest reasons that um, in the history of Northeast State that they felt the need to bring in this dual enrollment in the, this community? Well, when, when we met uh, Dr. Uh, Jack Barnes, who was the director of, of schools for Sullivan County, came to me with a, with a message to say, uh, do you think we could offer high school classes at, uh, I mean college classes on a high school campus? And I said, I don't, I don't know, I've never, I've never done it before. And he said, well, why can't we just explore this? So we did and we looked at other dual enrollment programs, went to Dr. Locke and said we'd like to offer these programs at, and, in Sullivan County. And uh, it was funny, it was, it was two years later after that meeting that we actually came into Sullivan County. Our first dual enrollment classes were really actually at Elizabeth and High School with Dr. Reuben Pierce, who was our, our um, instructor, and those classes ran at 7 o'clock in the morning. So I remember going up there at 7 o'clock in the morning to register the first six students we had in dual enrollment. And from dual enrollment, that started to change the, the image of Northeast State inside of the high school, not only with the students, but with the parents and then most importantly with those counselors. The counselors then became, and I always said this, and Dr. Locke knows this to be true, I said if you have one counselor and a principal who supports you, your dual enrollment programs are going to be a success on the campus. But it also showed those high school students, look, I can take quality college level classes while I'm still in high school, graduate with 12, 13, 15, 18 hours of college credit, 
and by the time I'm a second semester soft, I mean freshman, I can already be a, a sophomore in college. And that was the message we sent out with dual enrollment. Get quality classes while you're here and get a jump start on your, high, on your college education while you're still in high school. And don't, don't waste that last semester of your senior year. Make it very important for yourself. And that was our message to the parents and to the students. So dual enrollment was, that's one of the things I'm most proud of. Would you say that students responded really well to that in this community? Was there a flocking to it, or was it people kind of skeptical at it at first? No, it was slow. It was a slow beginning. It was a slow beginning because we had to go in, uh, and this is a stay, in the high school classes you had, had your, you had your AP class, you had your honors classes, and we came in as another alternative to those classes. And we said, you know, and it took a little while for us to do that. It took the momentum to get started and the success. and. I remember going out many times and doing presentations to students and family and whatever else, and particularly to the parents and to the counselors. But after we got a reputation in the school, the students did recruitment for us. We didn't have to, I didn't have to go out and have parents meetings anymore. The students recruited for us. The seniors were recruited to juniors in for the next year. And so and that's the way it got to be where the students actually did the recruitment for us. And that, that to me, as we went through that growth period of changing the way in which Northeast State was perceived in the high schools, did exactly what Dr. Locken answered that question there. It changed that perception of the counselor to say, not every student who goes and graduates from high school has to go to a four-year institution. They can go to a very high quality institution and come to Northeast State and with transferable college credit. And I think that along with you know saying look you know we're accredited we have southern association accreditation sax accreditation just like any other college university and our programs are on the same level as anyone else's programs and i think that's the message that went out now dr lock you're, the our humanities building on our bluntville campus is is named in honor of you how does that make you feel walking onto the campus and get to see your name on a building <laughs> well it's funny it's a real honor it's surprising every time you see it you think you know how did I deserve this but I'm grateful that the Board of Regents honored me in such a way and and it, it's nice to see when you come on campus. Dr. Locke you also played a large role in helping develop the academic village in, Kings, in downtown Kingsport which houses also our Northeast State campus there. What sort of inspired you to to get involved with that? Well Kingsport was a place within the region a city within the region, where uh, college has never really made an input the way I felt that it could. And the people in the community wanted higher education, have had for years. So it was not that tough to lead them into a direction where they make Northeast State their community college. And we worked hard at that, had a lot of people got on board with us, supported us fully. And really it just fell in, into place almost naturally. It was a sweet move, wonderful experience down there and no problems whatsoever. And I think it's turned out one of the, to be perhaps one of the greatest things ever happened in the city of Kingsport. Oh, definitely, I agree. Now also on the topic of that, what sort of brought about the other colleges getting involved into the academic village in Kingsport? Well, we wanted to, to make a program there where a student could come into Northeast State, do two years, and then transfer into to a senior institution so they wouldn't have to leave their home. You would have to go to UT Knoxville or Murfreesboro for the MTSU or anywhere else to school. You could get a, your baccalaureate degree, and now you can get a master's and even a doctorate through telecommunication right on, in the city of Kingsport without ever leaving. So you save a lot of money. It gives a lot of people an additional experience being able to go to college you wouldn't have been able to earlier because they have a location right there. There was some transportation. There was some child care involved, and we just had a perfect program down there. The community supported us fully, and, uh, and it's been a wonderful opportunity and, and a learning experience down there for everyone involved in the city. Now, Dr. Leffler, um, on the subject of diversity at Northeast State, we have a lot of different campuses and some multiple different cities, but how would you say that diversity through Northeast State, whether it be age or race or even majors, has had an impact on the college? Well, I think we, I think the reputation of the college answered that. I think that people felt comfortable coming here. I felt they, I think they came in and felt that they were welcomed onto the campus regardless. Uh, whether you're a non-traditional student, whether you were someone coming from a different country onto our campus, I think that they, they felt like that they, they were received here with a warm and welcome reception. And I think that, that made a big difference in, 
in diversifying the campus. Also, by moving our programs to off-campus teaching sites off of the main campus, it allowed those students to stay in their communities and go to school, and I think that in itself made them feel comfortable, particularly like Dr. Locke said in Kingsport, they could stay there, in Elizabethan and Mountain City, and so we were able to do those kind of things, which really enabled our students to feel, I think, comfortable and at home. And I've always been, you know, advocate of doing what we can do for every individual student regardless. Now, over the years, there's been a, quite a growth from just regular two-year degrees and certificates to a lot of transfer programs so that kids can transition from a two-year school to a four-year university quite easily. How would you say that those transfer pathway programs have enhanced? Do you think that more students are majoring in those subjects so they can get their bachelor's more easily, or is there still a stronghold in two-year degrees? No, I think, I, I think there's a mixture of both. I think the two-year degree program still has their, and we need those programs. We need the skilled two-year programs that provides a skilled workforce of those individuals to go out and work in the community. But I think we also needed those pathways so that students could move that smooth transition. Now, it wasn't always that way. It, and, and that transfer was difficult. Wouldn't you say, Dr. Locke, yeah. in many instances for yeah. students, the transfer was difficult. And, but I think through the Tennessee Pathways Program and through those avenues that we worked with through Dr. Locke's leadership and during those years where we were, trans, we were making that that uh, transition from a, a technical institute to a technical community college to a comprehensive community college, those pathways just gradually opened, whether they were with East Tennessee State or whether they were with other college universities in the region. Now, I think those made those comfortable moves. Some institutions were more easy to move into than others, and, but I think we, we worked together in partnerships, and I think that's one of the major things that Dr. Locke did and his thing was to set up the partnerships that needed to be set up between Northeast State, our other higher education entities, the school systems, and more importantly, the community. And I think those partnerships really can see where we are today in terms of our enrollment. Now, Dr. Locke, over your 13 years at Northeast State, what would you say was probably your best experience um, or event as a president? Oh, I'd have to say that the best experience of 13 of them was the graduation day. Uh, when you get to see people who worked for a period of time, some a short a couple of years, but some eight or 10 years to accomplish something that they, it was a lifelong dream of theirs. And so that was always the best day of the year for me every year was graduation night. And Dr. Locke, was there one particular student that you remember the most or had a, a certain impact on you while you were at Northeast State? No, there are lots of students who had an impact on me. I mean. Students had the opportunity, and many did so, to come in and sit down and talk with me on just a one-on-one -on -one basis and uh, to hear some of their stories, the hardships stories and success stories, are, it really meant a great deal to me. And, uh, now, Chris, how would you describe Northeast State in one word? Quality. I think you, I think you see that caring quality environment. I think quality is the thing that, that, that would be the one word that I would say about Northeast State. You come here, you get a quality education. And, and I think that's, that's been recognized uh, in the community. And Dr. Locke, what about you? How would you describe Northeast State in one word? There's so many one word descriptions that you could use for Northeast State. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> Chris's word of quality is, is uh, perhaps the best that I could think of as well. Uh, Success oriented, ready to help the person to succeed and achieve a better future. I think those are all words or phrases that can be used to describe the college. Now over the years there's been a, a huge change as we've discussed in Northeast State and the way that it's grown and expanded in so many different ways. What do you think is the school's next step, Dr. Locke? Of course, I've been out for a while and I'm not, not sure what all is happening on campus now, but I would think that with the construction of the new technical aid complex, that that all opened the door for many uh, additional new pro programs, enhanced programs of learning, and I think that would be the, the, the bright, next bright step in future Northeast State. Now, Chris, you said earlier that you had only planned on staying here for two years and you ended up staying for quite a bit longer than that. What would you say is the main thing that made you really stay and, and work more with Northeast State? 
Northeast Eight became my home. I had a lot of friends here. I had an opportunity to uh, do things and was given, I guess you have stepping stones in your career and I was given those opportunities to step into those things and, and the role of division chair in developmental studies and then Dr. Locke uh, allowing me to, uh, to move in the evening and distance education. It was, just, it was just an easy transition for me just to stay here and so it became home and it became not only a place that I worked but it it came a place that I enjoyed to be that I come enjoyed to come to every day, and 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 I and I guess too I'm proud of saying that I was able to see the college move and and change from 1984 to 1990 to 1996 to 1999 to 2000 and then into the into the era that we're in today, in which we've seen tremendous growth. Uh, of the college, so I'm very proud of that. It's nice to be with a winner, isn't it? It is, absolutely, and that's a good word. It's nice to be with a winner. It's good to see a winner. It's, be, it's good to be a part of that, and when people ask me, I, you know, I always say, you know, I'm so proud of my time at Northeast State. Now, because you've seen a lot of the transition at Northeast State, what would you say is Northeast State's next step into becoming bigger and better in the community? Well, I just think that we just need to continue doing what we're doing right now and, and, and do it right and continue to do that. Um, making sure that, you know, we still all the time keep the students first and focus in our mind and what we're doing. What we're doing, we're doing this for the students to enable them to better their lives. And as long as we keep that in the forefront of where we're thinking, I think the next step is we'll continue to expand. I think Johnson City is going to be a tremendous campus once it gets fully out and fully operational. And then, you know, moving our, moving our career technical programs out more again into the forefront again, as Dr. Locke said, with the new building, I think that's going to be a tremendous step and a tremendous growth for the college. I think that's going to emphasize again to how important it is. I was just the other day, yesterday I was talking to a gentleman out there who was a linesman. I was thinking about how important our electrical program is, those individuals that we need out in the workforce right now to do the type of work that, that needs to be done on a day-to-day -day basis. I think as long as the college uh, keeps in mind that we're a service institution, that our only purpose for being here is to help people who live within the region to have a better way of life and to improve the lifestyle not only here but across the state and the nation. And as long as we'll maintain a continuous improvement program, always saying that even though we're good, and we are very good here, we can be better, that the institution has a great future in front of it. Uh, definitely, Absolutely. and thank you so much, guys, for joining us today. Yes, you're very welcome. My name is Ann Rowell. I'm an actress, and I got my start at Northeast State Community College. Just as acting truly allows me to express myself and learn new things about myself. My whole experience at Northeast State has allowed me to do that. I've found new interests, new hobbies, new passions that I would have never known had I not come here. Northeast State gave me a quality education, amazing friendships, but most importantly, it allowed me to discover who I want to be. That concludes the program for today. In this episode of Direction Northeast, we examine the transition of the school to a community college. Community is very important to the students at Northeast State Community College, and this program takes a look at a few of the subjects they find important. Until we meet next time, on behalf of the students, staff, and faculty of Northeast State Community College, I'm Abby Hathorne, and this is Direction Northeast.